Perfect. Yeah, well, all right, like you always say, welcome, 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 number one sports talk indeed, indeed. Uh. we ain't like the Falcons, we won't blow the lead, look, all we talk is who that, uh. who got cut and who back, uh. rookies in the vents, uh. players you should look at, yeah. it's the sports coma, you don't wanna miss it, got the pre-game, party, post-game statistics, get a visit from Sway, maybe DC or Five, Make sure you subscribe in the views inside the Saints locker room high. Talk to Drew, Jordan, Zach, Peyton, New Orleans, who that nation? Best believe when I say we be gold and black. Ain't a miracle a rivalry could ever hold us back. No, Beast Quake, Bounty Gate, let the truth be told. It's the sports coma. All we know is say Super Bowl. Yeah. You're listening to the sports coma with Big Q and the guys on the PRO Media Network. Who that family?
What's going on, fam? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome indeed, family, to the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys where we have intense, entertaining, educating, and enlightening sport talk from your favorite sports family. I'm Big Q, if you don't know, and welcome to the Sports Coma, a.k.a. the Great Saints Think Tank, man. The greatest combine, cabal, that sounds sinister. <laughs> the greatest group of black and gold brains in the business, man. And we're steadily growing by leaps and bounds. Big ups to the black and gold family members in the building. M uh, much love to you. Much love to you. Big ups to you. On this Thursday night, family, good to see y'all in the live stream. Good to talk saints on this rainy afternoon, man. Big ups to the family members, diehard Saints fan, number one in the building. Much love to you, who that to your family. Uh, GM Kev in the building, what up? Debo, what up? Debo the guard in the building, man, what's happening? Donovan, Donovan Grayson, who that to you? 985 Live, who that to you? Joshua Hoover, who that to you? Josh, I see you. Dada Saints, number one, who that to you as well? Family, Javier, Michael Sachs Jr., who that to your family? Adada Saints, number one, once again. Dallas Allen, who that to you? He says, who that big Q in the fam? He said, do a shout out. He said, can you do me a favor and shout my girl Tara Clark out? She's a Conferred Saints fan <laughs> from the Falcons. Well, big ups to you, Dallas, and your, and your girl, Tara Clark. Welcome to the Great Saints. Thank, thank, Tara Clark. Who that to you, baby? That's what I'm talking about. And pulling them people, pulling our family away from them dreaded, stinking, rotten Atlanta Falcons. So welcome to the Great Saints Tank Tank family. Uh, big ups to you indeed. Who that to you? 985 says they're going to suck the life out of Traquan and throw him out. Dominic says, Dominic Evans, who that to your family? Says, who that Q? AK was just on IG Live with Matt Barnes saying he was injured before he set out. Said it hurt to run. That's why he was running out. Because he was in pain and he also said he never said he won. Hmm. Very interesting because what he told us during that time was he was running out of bounds because he thought nobody was behind him. <laughs> so, I mean, man, whatever, you know, I guess whatever, you know, we'll see how your ass run this year. Because you're supposed to be you're supposed to be fully healthy, 100 percent. Let's see how he activate during the season. Hope he, he should be 100 percent. I've seen some of his workout films. Uh, that he doing it pretty intense. So it looked like he is uh, close to 100, 100% to me based on some of the footage I was shown. But thank you for that information, fam. Torres Shepard Sr., who that to your family? Uh, Josh says, Big Q, Clowney, Griffin, uh, Anisha, and Bennett are still free agents. Why are the Saints not taking any of the vets? They come in and help immediately. It's still, you know, I, it's, it's like I, I've said, I think I've mentioned this before. It's still very, still early before the season. So a lot still can happen here, you know, and, and I'm looking at it like we know there's still a lot of veterans. Uh, this is unusual. A lot of really good veterans out there around this time that you can get for next to nothing. So I, 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 I see where you're coming from with that. But it's still a lot of time still remaining before the actual season unravels. And I do anticipate some more moves and will be made like the Saints made a move today and re-signing Patrick Olmame. So I'm still saying there's still some moves to be made. So we'll just have to see. Peanut 504, uh, Nola 504 Chief. What up, Peanut? Good to see your family. Derek L., who that to you? Dominic, uh, once again. Superstar Louisiana boy. Who that to you? Josh says, everyone, welcome to the next big ESPN analysis. Next to go head to head on Truth Talking versus Shan Shop. Let's give it up. To <laughs> uh, thank you for that. That's a pretty good intro there. I appreciate you, Josh. Who that to you? Eight Ward Zach 41. Who that to your family? Tramal. What up, Tramal? He said, we have a Saints troll on YouTube called Lord Brunson. Hmm. I don't know. We got a lot of trolls, fam. Debo said, let's cut Trey Quadis. <laughs> Before you even do anything, get rid of my Debo. Damone Benton, who that to you? Damone, the good to see you in the chat, family. Welcome to the stream. Steve Wynn, who that to you? Steve, uh, big ups to you, fam. Good to see you in the building as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, Peanut says, the Saints don't have the money to acquire clowning. We have to be realistic, Saints fans. Joshua says, Tom 
but they got to get acclimated to the playbook, all of us, et cetera, before the season. Good to see a lot of the family members. Who that to you, Jamie Doyle, in the building as well. Good to see a lot of the family members, a lot of new family members chiming in as well. Much love to you. If you're new to the Great Saints Think Tank, also known as the Sports Coma, please hit the like button and subscribe if you aren't a subscriber because we always have Great Saints talk here. Neville, who that to you, Neville? Good to see you in the chat as well and the rest of the family. In this episode of the Sports Coma, we'll be covering a few, uh, uh, some news and items, uh, particularly uh, speaking uh, the question I guess is asked when the saints made the move to uh, sign Patrick Oma may recently, it just happened not too long ago, maybe four or five hours ago when he signed Oma may the question in my mind was I was looking at it and I said, well, the saints still have, they got rid of a guy that made the pro bowl three straight years in a row. The three seasons that he was a saint, he was a pro bowler. He was never a pro bowler prior to that time frame. He came in and excelled beyond what he what he did as a professional. Three excellent seasons. wasn't what wasn't perfect by any stretch, but the man was a pro bowler. Each year you could never take that away from him. Saint says well, he's not in the future plans. I get that. They bring in the center Ruiz. I get that. Thinking about moving McCoy. I get that as well. That is a higher ceiling. I get that. Then I also said they're not done with the cuts. And I still feel, you know, with Oma May, who plays guard and tackle for him, that he could be a cheaper version than what Nick Easton is. And Nick Easton could be on next on the chopping block. So you have guys like Clapp that could play the guard, Tom Cameron Tom who could play center guard. Then you have Patrick Oma May, a guy they're familiar with, who can play tackle and guard as well. Plus they have a bevy of undrafted guys two of which were on the team and Derek Kelly and Ethan Greenwich, who the Saints liked and most and spent a lot of time on the active roster last year, especially Ethan Greenwich. This guy was on the active roster the entire summation of the season. So the Saints really liked this kid. So it looks at me, I said, okay, they got rid of Larry Warford, saved about seven, eight million dollars. Who's next on the chopping block? Nick Easton. Nick Easton could very well be the next man to get that axe or get the scissors, however you see it. He the next man, in my opinion, to get that axe. Five million dollars versus a Pro Bowler who was just who you save all you save eight, and the guy was a Pro Bowler all three years. Who that to you, Gundam? Thirteen and the family. Good to see. You. Says who that family? The greatest analyst on the side of Mississippi. Who that to the family uh, as well? Join it, Willie Mitchell. Who that to you, Willie? Good to see you in the stream as well. Uh, I'm not. Debo says Brunson is delusional. Eagles fan wants to have Carson built like I don't know who Brunson is. I don't really know who this character is. I just heard about him for the first time. So a lot of you uh, family members probably aware, but I don't really spend too much time listening to, you know, other people. You know, every now and again, I'll catch something, but uh, I'm not really sure enough to comment on it. But. As far as the Saints go, in this episode, family, we're going to talk about the great Saints tank tank. Uh, we're going to break that down. The Saints move ahead and cut Warford for younger uh, dudes. Now, Nick Easton's next up on the on the docket. And I say that to say because the Saints do a good service here by actually re-signing Patrick Omame. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to jump right into it, family. We're going to cover that story right here. And let me... Bring up the screen. Here we go. Gator okay, Saints sign, re sign Oma May for offensive line depth. Of course, that news is brought to you by uh, the good folks at Saints News Network. Of course, the NFL Network and a few other people dropped it, but you know, you got to support the people uh, that's close to you and a lot of great Saints Think Tank family members like uh, Kyle Mosley and the good folks at uh, Saints News Network, Bob Rose, who Bob is coming. He's going to be on the show. Uh, real soon, good guy, and the rest of those family, those good guys over there at the network. The New Orleans Saints added more depth, re-signing Oma May, and of course they released. And this is also on the NFL New Orleans Saints dot com website that he'll be rejoining the team six four three thirty seven three twenty seven. 
started uh, against the Atlanta Falcons to place a Wofford because of injury on Thanksgiving. Omaha played well on the road for the Saints. He spent the last two months as the free agent before agreeing to a new deal. And the details of Omar May's contract was not, is not released. But, of course, we know that it's going to be something extremely, extremely, extremely inexpensive. Just to keep it real, which it'll be extremely inexpensive to uh, for him. So, why did the Saints bring Omar May back? Because obvious reasons, family. Hell, obvious <laughs> reasons. Omaha comes back, he plays... Uh, Oma May plays two positions, either guard or tackle. He's extremely uh, uh, cheap. I'm not really – he's very serviceable. I remember DC always would use that term. He'll say serviceable, 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 serviceable. And that's the term for Patrick Oma May. But that's just good enough to keep it honest with you. That's just di- – it's just good enough to keep Oma <laughs> versus Nick freaking Easton, man. Come on. I mean, but this is the thing, man. Well, I'm still expecting the Saints as they bring in back more of the the guys that they're familiar with. And a lot of this is due to the fact of the climate that we're living in. That's pretty much what this is. That's why you see so many of the guys that the Saints have had on this team are coming back. They're coming back because this is because, like I've said, the, the, the climate in which we're living under. They're familiar with these guys. They know what they can do. And they have their uh, medicals and, and whatnot, and it's easier for them to do this way, do it this way. And I think if things weren't like this in in the medical climate that we're under, that things would be severely different. You wouldn't see most of all of these, mo- the majority of some of these guys coming back. I don't, I don't think you would see that. But bear in mind, the Saints did bring back another familiar guy, and of course. It's definitely a cap. More cap moves are coming, no doubt about it. So a lot of people are still thinking, Q, why aren't they bringing in guys like uh, 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 Everson Griffin or any of the rest of the guys, or Logan Ryan, the rest of these guys? The, re- the reality of the situation is we're still not done here yet. As that's been the case, we're still moving toward and headed toward the season. Uh, the NFL still moving forward with the season, even if, this the, even if the fans can't go to the games, the season will continue. And the only way it doesn't continue is if things ratchet it up a bit. But it's very weird things going on, man, in the climate of this country. It's really weird. And I've read many, many a literature, and it almost damn near mirrors the literature. Books that I've read years ago about stuff like this. <laughs> I mean, to a T. It's like the some guns took the playbook and said, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All they have to do is read the books, man. You know it all. But absolutely amazing. I still expect the NFL season to move ahead and continue on strong, even if the fan base aren't. And the NFL will find a way around it to be able to then uh, charge your ass to compensate for some of the money that will be losing from the stadiums that, you know, we basically built for our teams for free. Uh, Debo says Brunson is upset. Okay, I read it. Debo says if Easton, if I'd keep Easton if he restructures his contract, five million a season, restructuring his contract also could be, could be an option. I thought that was an option for Larry Warford. I was just not understanding why you just had to get rid of him. I mean, I just done, didn't understand that, but I get it. You know, if that's what you're talking about improving the line and how he played against Minnesota, it wasn't his all. Little, little secret, it wasn't all his fault. He wasn't the only one stinking in the Minnesota game. I mean, if you want to put the tape on, they pretty much all was stinking up, especially Drew Brees. So if we had to get Larry, get rid of Larry Walford. I think you wanted to march him out of there too. If that's the logic behind it, you know what I mean? But they didn't see it. They want the team to be built a certain way and they're moving forward. So Nick Easton, I really do think that he is he's definitely due for a restructuring. He's making too much money as a reserve lineman. So either, it's either a cut or a major restructuring coming. So I can get behind that uh, Debo. Gundam says, Big Q, when resources permit, can you do a show purely on football analysis on how the Saints can win it all? Please. Yeah, I can do that. I do that. Probably end up putting that together between uh, the weekend and next Wednesday on why I think the Saints are winning. We're releasing a series of videos uh, want to be coming soon should be out tomorrow which is it's available to our patreon family members and some of our members uh which is the is the saints uh top 10 defense this year of course last year they ranked 11 
but the secondary was 20 plus something or other with a fourth rank uh, rushing uh, rushing defense. So that's out as well. A lot of people can view that versus our Patreon page. If you want to join up to be a patron, there's other unlock content we do for the sports coma, including it's called the uh, TSC Q and a live in which uh, we do that every Tuesday on patreon.com slash the PRO media network. Also is un other unlocked content as well there where you can listen for Bossi, who that to you. Good to see your family. Uh, Debo says Griffin, Ryan and Clowney want market value pay. That's not going to happen. The value of the market is exponentially is it's going through the flow for them. So the after the draft, they still want these fat contracts. Some of these guys are go, just going to have to go and sign. They're going to have to just go like Everson Griffin opted out that three year deal with Minnesota to bet on himself. Didn't work out, but he could sign a one year prove it deal with a contender, play hard for him and hit the market again next year. Hopefully the economic or the medical circumstances will be going through will be a lot better. I anticipate it probably will get worse in the fall because because um, of the obvious f effects of what's going on. And I would caution a lot of people to not believe TV doctors. I would caution you to do your research. I will caution you to be critical thinking. I will caution you to not believe everything the television tells you. I will caution you to be a person. Uh, that be very mindful of the things that you hear because you are now in a time frame when everything that was held back is now being thrown at you. And they've been organized and they've been moving real fast and now they've uncloaked. Like like if you a Star Wars fan, you remember the Klingons? Star Trek fan, Star Trek. And you remember the Klingons and their bird, bird of prey ship? It was one of the baddest ships in the old Star Trek world because it had a cloaking device. <laughs> and you ain't know where them blasted Klingons at. And they'll be moving around. The next thing you know, the Klingons are uncloaked right in front of you. But we always knew that they that once they un they could not never they couldn't fire while the ship was cloaked. That was during the sitcom. Then ultimately later on, I forgot what movie that was. I think that was one of the Klingon movies where they had a device where the Klingon bird of prey could fire while cloaked. I think that was the one with, with uh, dang, I forgot which one that was with Captain Kirk on there. But my 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 father was a Star Trek fan, man, and that kind of passed to me. He was a Lakers fan early on too, so I don't know. But the reality at the end of the day, man, is that it's a lot of great things going on uh, for the world. But I really caution people to kind of keep your mind critical thinking and don't buy into the uh the fear thing because that's really dangerous man please don't do that uh debo says coma talking our know the legends oh uh, 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 let's see donovan said they know the playbook already schemes with no otas and possibly no camp it gives us an advantages to uh to uh, bring back these players i agree donovan that's absolutely true uh debo says rest in peace wayne reese that's right from mcdonald 35 he was the head coach good man a lot of people uh, Coach Reese touched on Delvin Bro was talking about that as well in his past interview. Uh, if you want to listen to portions of Delvin Bro interview, played a large chunk of it on the show. Uh, Delvin Bro uh, unloads on Sean Payton. We cover that in the middle of the week show. It's in our uh, it's in the uh, upload section or to feed some of the latest videos. You can go back and listen. Joshua says, "Big Q, I read an article. They wanted to keep Waffen and restructure, but he wouldn't take the pay cut or restructure they wanted him to take." Yeah, I've heard that too. Uh, he wanted to remain too, but that's not a surprise too. That eventually I did hear it before. I did hear before all that started that the Saints were looking at looking beyond Larry Warford. They wanted, and I remember reading about that as well. So I don't think he was in the long range plans, but things change. And as you can see right now in the in the arena right now, free agent arena, a lot of teams want Larry Warford. But he's standing pat on that $7 million exit price. And a lot of teams are like, oh, no, we won't. Oh, <laughs> no, we don't want to give you that much. So he's kind of holding on to that. So you're absolutely right on that. Thank for that family. Uh, Debo says family is uh, hurt deep, man. Yeah, I know. He, Wayne Reese was a very, very good person and very impactful, man, to a lot of people. So 
Uh, Donovan Sumalad is Logan Ryan hasn't signed, but in conversation with yeah several teams that he's signed to, nobody, no serious takers for Logan Ryan right now. He's the best cornerback out there on the free agent, and whoever gets him will get a hell of a player for next to nothing. Who that to you, Joshua? Is the longer they wait, the less they're going to make. That's absolutely right. Cheryl, who that to you, Cheryl? Good to see your family. Much love to you. Uh, Derek as well, who that to you? Uh, good to see you. Uh, Kashin, I see you, DLP. 2600 fam i see you gundam 13 says star trek undiscovered country big q okay there you go there you go see i remember that that star trek analogy